The presidential candidate of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, Adewole Adebayo, has reiterated the party's commitment uh, to tackle insecurity and address poverty and unemployment when it wins the general elections uh, next year. Adebayo expressed this optimism during the launch of the party's national <coughs> secretariat in the federal capital territory, which uh, also provides an provided an opportunity for the party leaders to hold their INEC or the NEC meeting. We will go to each of the 176,840 polling units, each of the 8,800 wards, each of the 774 local governments, each of the 36 states and the FCT, each of the six zones and all over the country and deliver victory for the Nigerian people. Victory for SDP, it's not only when we win the election. Victory is when 80% or any portion of national resources will not be stolen. Victory is when every child is in school and com can complete school without strikes. Victory is when you have a sound medical care for everybody. Victory is when you have a stable currency that will not make you poor while working. Victory is when human rights Rule of law does not depend on the government, but depends on the machinery of state. Victory is when all the black people in the world will say, whatever happens to us, thank God there's Nigeria. Let us forget our pedestrian or casual or sentimental or emotional issues. If we really want to rescue Nigeria from the current situation that it is, it means that we have to set aside those minor issues. I hope Nigerians will choose very, very carefully. It should not be business as usual. Take 10,000 and vote for the wrong candidate. No, we can all see the crisis we are going through. 10,000, 20,000 can no longer solve the problem of insecurity, of hunger and inflation. Let's continue our build up to the 2023 general elections now as former minister and SDP governorship candidate in Delta State, Kenneth Maggi, joins us now. Thank you so much for being on the news tonight. And if I may ask you, uh, an entrepreneur wanted to become the governor of a state such as Delta. Why? Um. As you will know, were things in Delta State and part of the country took the dimension that is expected of any proper nation, I would have been the last person to want to go and run for governorship. But unfortunately, all the trials, all the supports we have had as a state is one that has lived us with more sorrow, more backwardness, lack of opportunities, and hopelessness. The singular reason why I have decided to put myself forward to govern the people come 2023. All right, that's um, quite interesting to note. Well, as a leading uh, industrialist, you say that you will address the issue of uh, industrialization in Delta State within uh, one year. That sounds like magic to me. How exactly are you going to achieve that if you become governor? The honest truth about it is that it's achievable. What is lacking largely in Delta State before now is dishonesty. People do not believe anymore in governance. The issue is this. Take what I've done in the state as an individual, as a private investor. I have removed people from poverty to at least source of livelihood, being able to fend for themselves, being able to do business. I have over 6,000 people gamefully engaged in their day-to-day -day source of livelihood. Put it, if you take Saple for instance, Saple has major industries that are synonymous with them. We have the flour mill in Saple, we have the shoe factory in Saple, we have bitumen in Saple, we have a booming cement business in Saple. 
all of these businesses have died. And what you need to do is to bring partners. And then you ask a simple question, how am I going to do it? I resonate as the first black man in the entire world to become an AKS member of Rotary. And just the fact that everybody knows that Kenneth Baggy is honest, Kenneth Baggy will not play wrong, Kenneth Baggy will not do it wrongly, that is hope. That's what you need. Just the fact that everybody knows that I will bring security about within the first one week of my being a governor, things will change. It is the personality involved. It is what you have done before, not what you want to do. I have done it in my private life, and I believe very strongly, given the opportunities Delta State has had or Delta State is you know, confronted with, it will be a win-win situation. I have over six seaports in Delta where I to put all the six seaports into use. Take the issue of cucumber. If I were to just take one local government and give cucumber to them to, pro to, to produce, we'll produce cucumber in millions and then we'll sell to our people, sell to the country and export. Take cocoa. Cocoa pot is rotting away. We're only one of the best pots in the country. The entire pot business, when pots were being created, it was divided that things that were supposed to come to the southern part of Nigeria would come through worry and all of that. The reason why Lagos seaports are all destroyed, the road are all destroyed, because the volume of traffic cannot have been prepared, cannot be the case. For, so it's knowing what to do. You must have an entrepreneur mind. In the last how many years of this government, particularly this one in the last seven years, no single proper industry has come to play. I mean, we are even doing plantation. Who, what are you, what's your plan? Every year, for instance, just from collecting mangoes, collecting oranges, collecting pineapples, which are now being destroyed, I will can them and put them into use and send them all over the world. Look at rice. If you go to Isoko area of the state, it is one that is good to produce one of the best and finest of Cobain's rice in the country, in the world. We have what it takes. We know what to do, and we can turn it, we can turn it around. Well, uh, some would say talk is cheap. Uh, but Mr. Baggy, in a previous interview, you had said, you had talked about industry, and you were quoted to say, uh, give me one year, and I will turn the state around. In practical terms, in numbers, how many youths and unemployed do you hope to uh, employ gainfully in that one year you talk about? What are the numbers you're reeling out uh, for the populace to even look at your manifesto in the first place? Put it this way, one of the plans I have, as soon as I take over, I will gainfully engage all the youths in Delta State by paying them a token of 30,000 Naira each. Whilst this money is being paid, within three months, given the kind of plan we have, we'll gainfully engage them into industries, cottage businesses, and then start getting them to release them from the payment of 30,000, which we'll start them with, because the people have been driven into hunger. The people have been dri driven into poverty. Look at the glass factory. If we take Ugeli South for a loan, we can put 25 good, massive industry to produce glass, bottles, squeeze cream of cars, vases, plates, what have you, with clay what we have. We have enough in Delta. Even if state is endowed with natural resources, it's ours. All we need to do is to segment all the local government to produce one major industry or the other in the first one year of my government. We have started already the plan. We have started talking to people. They have come for survey because we don't want to state, we don't want to get into government and once we get into government, start making plans. Because we know the state truly well. We have started engaging people to look at what is best by local government, what we can do. Initially, I didn't want to release part of my plans, but as it is now, nobody can do anything with it. I can tell you for sure that every local government, the 25 local government in Delta State will be gainfully engaged. My youths will be out of the street. Once I properly engage my youths, I can tell you that is the beginning of greatness of the state. The state has been completely disused. The people have not been given the right opportunity. We are saying we can do it.
All right, hopefully you can. I mean, 40.38 or so percent unemployment in Delta State. Uh, I would like to hear exactly how you turn uh, that around, but hopefully your industrialization plan uh, can achieve that. But you, you talked about your uh, track record earlier. Of course, your former Minister of State for uh, Education. Um, just move away a little from what you plan to do in Delta State. This ASU strike that just refuses to go away. I mean, as former Minister of State for uh, Education, it seems you were not able uh, to address the perennial issues that ASU continues to fight uh, over. What exactly um, do you think is the solution to the ASU problem if you were in a position to solve, uh, to resolve it now? Put it this way. All the time I was Minister for Education, there was no ASU strike. And what we did was very simple. If you recall, I created 13 universities, eight secondary education for children, girls, and what have you. The government is being dishonest. We need not to go into all of this acrimony with ASU. You cannot get people to do the job of teaching, of molding your future leaders and not giving them what they require. I don't think, in all honesty, that ASU is asking for more than they deserve. I believe that the government is irresponsible to the extent that the funds, ASU did not only ask for this money and this progressive arrangement to industrialize or keep our schools alive, but, all that money that was collected and is being collected every day, the government stole the money. The government went into the money without the arrangement. That money was supposed to cater for all this ASU problem. When we were in government as minister and I was in charge of education, nothing of the sort happened. We never tempered with their money. They had their money because in the first place, they were the ones who looked for the money. They, want, they were the ones who brought the plan to put the money in place. Let government refund all the money that had been drawn from the funds that was meant to cater for universities. It will not, will not have strike. The professors are responsible. They themselves are parents of their own right. We must be honest as a people. And unless we do it honestly, we will have problem. Nigeria is living under a very deceitful atmosphere as we speak. And we must change that narrative. Parents, civil society, students, youths, they should all come together and fight the menace of government toying with their lives because we don't have another place to go. Well, you seem to be of the opinion that there's a lot of deceit in Nigeria, whether you're speaking about Delta State or uh, generally as a country. Who's responsible for that and who's deceiving who? Put it this way. Whilst I have served at the ministerial level, which is the country, I am particular today about what I want to do in Delta. The reason why I have rejected three ministerial appointments, as you know, one from President Obasanjo, one from Abacha, and one from Jonathan, which I deeply did not want to do, but I was, you know, talked into it. Even the president in office today had attempted to make me a minister, but that's not what I'm looking for. I believe that it is time. My home is in Tatars. My home is not well put together. Let me go back and set Delta right. Once I'm able to set Delta right, as everybody will know, I believe it will be a win-win situation. The deceit, the greatest problem is deceit. Improper conduct. For instance, were you to block all the loopholes of misappropriation, misuse of funds, irresponsible investment in the state, the state can pay its pensioners. Take your pensioners, for instance. How would people work? Your father, my father, how would they work? After so many years of 35 years service, they don't get their pension. People don't get their retirement better and fit and they die. It is because of planlessness. I believe, let us be honest, let the people hold accountable people they make leaders, people that governs them, people that are their local government, so at least we can have a source of livelihood. The entire state in Nigeria can do very well. They should charge them. This whole idea of coming to collect money at the end of the month, 
as a toll. I don't think it's going to work for us for too long. I made a proposal with regards to the university, if you recall, when I was minister, I said, look, let us give the universities back to the owners. All right. We lost is, it, is it frozen? Okay, no, we're still very much uh, with you. You were talking about, you know, uh, how to, uh, your, what you would do or advise that uh, the school should be given back to, um, you know, you were trying to land on that, that talking about the universities now. But let me quickly put this in. Uh, you seem to be the only governorship candidate uh, that's picked a woman as running mate, uh, you know, uh, in Delta State there, of course. But there's this issue around uh, the alleged uh, torture of uh, female you know, employees at your hotel. Uh, maybe you want to clear the air on that. And you're choosing a female running mate, is it to make up for, you know, the public perception that may have uh, followed that alleged torture of female staff at your hotel? And exactly what's the story around that? Quite honestly, and thank you for this opportunity. Um, there's no need to waste our time very quickly. The gentleman who was touted to say we, they will make him a governor, but that he has come from the same local government as I have come from, which is really South, and that the only way he would have made any progress was that if he was able to demarket me. Um, the gentleman today talks to me, he's my friend. Um, there was nothing of the sort. It was all a makeshift arrangement. It was all an attempt to bring somebody who, in their own perception, was the man to do the job, but how do we stop him from doing the job? I was close to Okowa for seven years. Okowa said and did everything and made all the promises on earth. But the fact is that there's a problem. It says I cannot be controlled. I cannot eat human being. I cannot participate in things that is ungodly. The major problem we have is that there was nothing like that. You will recall that at some point in life, they had said that I had lion. I've never seen lion in my life. They had said I don't pay salary. But the good thing is that if they said I didn't pay salary, it means I had a company. I was good enough to establish a company, but I was not paying salary, which is untrue. And I went on air to say if there were anybody in this country that we worked with or worked for us in any of my group, 18 companies for instance, and he has an issue, if he can prove that point, we'll pay him 10 million. Nobody has been able to come. No woman was stripped naked. Nobody had any torture in my hotel. We take responsibility if they can prove that case. But the good thing is that my friend, my younger brother, Peter Magbo, who was induced to say they were going to give him a governorship where he to be able to demarket me, had come back to say, oh, it was a deceitful game. I regretted it. He's come to apologize to me, and I've let it, I've let it go. So was it was like an it. attempt it was to... political gimmick. Yeah, when you say it was an attempt to demarket you, the, the court actually fined you uh, one million naira for, well, according to the court, for taking the laws into your own hands. Did you pay that one million? God forbid. I never would do any such thing. The fact here is that four courts of competent jurisdiction cleared me of no wrongdoing that these are go diggers who wanted to make money, wanting to charge me three billion each. So four courts, a federal high court, three competent courts in Delta State. But surprisingly, the young lady who went and said he gave me a get got a judgment that I should pay one million. Was a lady that was put as a judge last year by no less if I Yokoa wanted to drive home that view, who just went along. Look at the judgment she gave. She All went. Right. Uh, Mr. Baggy, uh, thank you, thank you for that clarification. Uh, but because we're running out of time, let's go back to industrialization because you talk so much about industrialization. Uh, there are some people who are already reacting to what you have said. They say one of your hotels, you have one of the biggest hotels in Delta State, and it's been overtaken by weed. So how do you explain industrialization if you're not able to manage that? You want to respond to that. And what sort of investment are you exactly bringing to Delta State? Should you become governor next year? First and foremost, we are all alive. Could you please? I have 
an Italian general manager in the hotel in Delta State. There's no weed anywhere. I was there yesterday, and then the place is complete, you know, partly full, fill up. There's no weed. If you go back to check, those are all gimmick and political, you know, stunts. Um, we do not have hotel only in Delta, even though Delta has suffered a lot of setback, because this type of attitude of driving away investors from the state is regrettable. I mean, if people take their time to do investment, if it was possible, they would have driven, except that market is a very serious business. I own the biggest shopping mall with about 6,000 people trading day in, day out of that market. The hotel is doing very well. The factory we had, we have the biggest beverage factory in Africa that we are opening right now. We closed down because the, qu the quantity of production was not good enough to cater for the expenditure. We bought new factories, we bought new equipment, and we're starting any moment from now. Put it this way, would you ever visit Delta State to find out the decay, the rough, that nothing is happening because of this attitude. If I have chested out to bring my investment, not borrowed money, not stolen fund, not money traceable to taxpayers' loots, and people are doing what they are doing now, where have they, where, what have they done? What have they done with their private lives? What have All they right. brought to the state? That's why the state is being treated the way it's treated. Great, and that's a good place to leave it. Kenneth Baggy, former Minister of State for Education and uh, the SDP governorship candidate in Delta State. Wish you all the very best.